morning, everyone. Um, so I picked the topic of uh, some drinks that I like. Uh, alcoholic drinks. Um, let's see, I can start off with uh, red wine. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is a bottle of uh, called Unruly Red. Uh, it's by, uh, it's a mix by uh, Bethmo. It's relatively cheap, it's about $13 a bottle. And they also have uh, the five cent sale with this usually. <laughs> So it usually comes around to eight, nine dollars a bottle. Um, it's a pretty good mix. Um, as for other drinks, recently me and my friends are really into like scotches. So we all joke around that we're all old men. And uh, like right here, I have a Glenfiddich 14. Uh, I do like Glenfiddich. Uh, the 14 is okay. I like the. Here in the 15 year better. Um, this one is a bit more uh, spicy, harsh for my taste. Another another uh, whiskey I really like is uh, Highland Park single scot uh, single malt scotch. This is a 12 year that we had, um, but I like the 15 year. Better. And recently on a trip to Taiwan, we went to uh, the distillery that uh, won Whiskey of the Year uh, last year. And uh, this is one of the types that they had. It's uh, from Kavalan. If you can see, there's some Chinese here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so... I got the Sherry Oak one, but uh, you can actually buy the normal one here in, uh, at Bev. Uh but it's kind of more expensive here. It's about $100 a bottle. Yeah, that one's made in Taiwan. And uh, well, uh, like I said, it got the uh, Whiskey of the Year last year for the Blue Soloist label. And the year before that, it was Hibiki that got that. It's a Japanese whiskey. Um, but yeah. Last but not least, uh, I went to Davis. And at Davis, there was a really uh, famous drink. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called a wiki. A wiki Wacky Woo. Um, it's basically a drink that is the most bang for your buck is about $8 a cup and uh, included uh, seven different alcohols and three different types of juices. And uh, I'll just show you what's in it. Um, the different types of juices that they have are uh, pineapple juice, orange juice, and cranberry juice. The pineapple juice is very important because that's what masks all the flavors of all the different types of alcohol. Um, and yeah, if you want to get fucked up, this is a very easy way of doing it. Um, so here I have all seven ingredients. You just buy like cheap, any of these types. So like a vodka, a rum, uh, gin, uh, tequila, and amaretto, triple sec, and last but not least, 151. But for the 151, you take a straw and you uh, pour the 151 shot into the straw. So if you want to have a wilder party, my uh, big brother in my fraternity actually used a boba straw and poured 151 in this, uh, 151 in the boba straw instead of a regular straw. But the point of that is to have a cup full of a 
really big mix of uh, alcohol. And uh, if you put enough pineapple juice, you won't taste it at all. And you're supposed to drink it fast through the straw. So yeah, any questions? Yeah, I have a question about the scotch thing is like, you know how champagne has to be made in California, or sorry, in uh, France, like to be called champagne in California, it's supposed to be like sparkling wine or something else to that effect. Mm -hmm. Does scotch have a similar um, like patent on it? Does it have to be made in uh, Scotland? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, well, not that I know. I, I think it's not, but yeah. Be made, it can be made anywhere, like in the U.S. even. Cool. Any other questions for Nelson? What was the name of that drink again? Uh, it's called uh, Wiki, uh, to call it short. And then if you look at on, look for it online, I think it's under the name uh, Wiki Wacky Woo. So uh, a warning with that drink, they serve a maximum of three at the bar. That's for the people that can drink a lot. Usually after one, a lot of people are already feeling very happy. But uh, a game that we used to do at the Davis, since there's not really much in farmland, is uh, go to the bar, pound two, and then walk to uh, the student center and uh, go bowl. Oh dear. <laughs> All right, Nelson, thank you. That brings us in at five minutes. We have Scott next with his topic, Entertaining Reptile Pets, unless he's updated it. Scott, are you ready to present? Um, wait, what? <laughs> How long have I had that up there? <laughs> uh, since like the middle of last week. But um, for those of you who didn't sign up, I put your names up there, but uh, feel free to pick a better topic. Scott, we can delay you till another day if you're not prepared for that. But um, we would like to hear from everyone. So make sure you visit that whiteboard. Sure. Sorry about that. I didn't know. Um, but yeah, I don't mind at all. Scott could give us a lecture on fixing a, a water heater or otherwise <laughs> the piping in your basement. <laughs> yes. New environment today. <laughs> all right. We'll cut Scott a break. And we'll talk about Ajax and JSON and give you guys a little bit more time to work on the prompts today. Um, last call today is going to be for groups. If you have a preference and you haven't already told us of a group or a person or people you would like to be grouped with, let us know. Um, we'll get those probably assigned tonight. All right. At that, um, Zan's going to talk to us about Ajax and JSON. Any other uh, lingering questions before we jump into that? All right. I'm giving it over to Zan. All righty. Um, so first off, uh, with thumbs in the, in the chat, how many of y'all, uh, have heard of an API and slash know what API stands for, like what APIs are and do? Alrighty. So it's mixed. Maybe, maybe a few more thumbs up and thumbs down. Um, so I, there's a lot of talk about APIs and a lot of websites uh, rely on information from uh, other places. And that's, I think, the context that you hear about it the most is like um, if someone wants to embed a, a Google map in their website, they'll use uh, the Google API to go get information from uh, Google servers and put it on their website. Um, but APIs are also used. Um, internally by the same site. The, the website that you see on your browser or on your phone uh, is what's considered the client side. Uh, and then on the back end, you have what's considered the server side. You have your server. And your, your server for your site, even if it's just your site communicating with your server, is going to have an API. Um, and an API stands for an application programming interface. Um, so essentially, uh, what it is are a way of communicating kind of a, a predefined way where a client can ask a server for a specific 
type a, a specific piece of information or can say, hey, I have this information and I want to put this in my database or post this to some other place. Um, and a lot of APIs currently are built on a protocol called REST. And REST stands for Representational State Transfer. Uh, essentially what it is is a, a widely agreed upon standard for how websites and applications are going to structure um, their, their request when they go ask for information from a server. Um, and REST relies on uh, a whole bunch of predefined action verbs or like uh, methods. Um, and the four most common are get, post, put, and delete. Um, and when you get something from a server, it's exactly like it sounds. You're going to get a piece of information. When you post something, you're creating a new piece of information. When you use the put method, you are updating a resource that already exists. And when you want to delete something, you can use the delete method. Now, there are more than that. And um, if you're interested, I would encourage you to go look up more about how, how REST works and what other kind of actions you can take. But these will be what you're using the majority of the time. And really, even just the top two are probably going to be um, the two methods that you use most often and definitely everything that you're going to need for today's exercises. Um, so the, the name of this section is JSON and AJAX. JSON is a specific way of formatting information. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, actually, let's see. Um, well, I'll get to it in a second. So it, it, it's, it's a way of formatting information. Um, it's essentially a large object where everything, the keys and the values, have been stringified or put between quotations. Um, and servers and clients tend to send stuff back and forth as JSON packages that then get parsed and turned into uh, JavaScript on the other side. Um, and AJAX is a protocol for making those requests. And it stands for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And we'll see what that asynchronous means in just a second. Um, so I have, uh, I have an HTML page. And there's not much on here. There's a header that says data. And I've included a jQuery link at the top of the page because we're going to be using jQuery to make our AJAX request. Um, all right. So like with all things in jQuery, there's different ways of doing this. I'm going to use the AJAX method for this demonstration, but there's also mm, shortcuts that you can look into the jQuery documentation to find, like you can do dot get, you can do dot post, um, and I believe there are some other ones. Uh, but for right now, we'll do AJAX. And the difference is that by using just the base AJAX method, you have a more fine tuned control. You can provide more options. And what you pass into this, uh, this method is an object. And that object is going to have the particulars of your AJAX request. Um, so in the lesson, they, they walk you through using the, uh, the Open Weather API. Um, so there's this thing called Open Weather Map, and it's an open, free API. Uh, you will have to go and sign up and get an API key at the site to use it, which I think it doesn't specify this in the um, it doesn't specify this in the curriculum, but their their way of doing things has changed a little bit, and so they require a key now. But it's pretty easy. You sign up, and you immediately have a key available to you that you can use. Um, so to structure our AJAX request, we're going to use a method of get to go get information. 
and we want to get some weather. Um, I think we'll get the weather about San Francisco. Um, I'm going to store San Francisco, the string San Francisco, as a variable, which you don't have to do. You can just write a string in there. But what this will give us the ability to do later on is that we could wrap this Ajax call in a function that would take a city name variable, and then we would be able to pass different cities in. Right now, I'm just going to hard code San Francisco into it. Um, and then to get the information from that city, we are going to use a, a URL that the open weather map gives us to go get information. Um, and this URL is called uh, an API endpoint. So essentially, when we, when we make a GET request to the base server, um, that server has certain routes or URLs that can be used to get to different places and pieces of information on the Open Weather Maps backend. Um, these first two, data and 2.5, are, I believe, uh, for the Open Weather Map, they're versions of the Open Weather Map that you want to use. But then, let me get rid of this for a second. Um, after that, there's different APIs that you can target. So if I do the weather API, it's going to give me the current weather of the city that I'm asking about. However, I could also do a, a five day or three hour forecast. And you'll see that that one uses forecast instead of, of weather. So if I did that, um, I would be getting a long term forecast instead of, instead of the current weather. Uh, for right now, we'll just use the current weather. All right. So the second piece of uh, this URL is what's called query parameters. Um, whenever you use the question mark, or you see a question mark at the end of one of these URLs, it signifies that everything after it is going to be a parameter that's used by the Ajax request to kind of give information to the API that we're interacting with. Um, and the specifics of how to format that, those query selectors and what the, the names, like what the variable names of query selectors they're looking for, uh, will usually be spelled out fairly explicitly in the documentation for whatever API you're using. Like if we look at o Open Weather Map, they, I've kind of copy and pasted this URL right here and formatted it like that. Um, let's see. Again, for the, uh, for the Open Weather API, we're going to need our, uh, our key, our API key. Um, they show a slightly different way to do it. And I will post this code in Slack. I think the easiest way is to provide, um, you can provide any extra data that you want to provide to the API using the data property on your Ajax request. So I'm going to provide my app ID using that data property. Um, now, when it goes and asks for that data and the open weather API returns that data, we need to do something with it. And the way that it's formatted on jQuery uh, is it's called a success function. So we're going to create this property called success, and we're going to have data that comes back from the Open Weather API. And inside the body of this success function, we'll do something with the data. For right now, I'm just going to log it out. And then another essential part of making an Ajax request is error handling. If, you, um, if, if it returns to you an error and you don't have some way of handling that error, it's going to uh, it's kind of, it's going to break your code. Like your site will stop running or some part of your site might stop running. But if you do something with that error, it won't interrupt the flow of the program. So for right now, I'm just going to log the error. 
Um, let's see if you can close this up down here. Oops. Cool. All right. So I think that this should log the data to the console. Yep. All right. So let's see what that data looks like. It's returned to us an object. Um, and that object has properties that are different points of data about the current weather in San Francisco. Um, let's see, the description is missed. You can find out what the clouds look like today. Um, all right, and here's probably a lot of the primary information you're interested in when you're looking at weather. Inside of the main property, there's all these different data points. Um, and so this looks like an object in the console, but it's actually a, uh, it's actually a, a string. Um, and in order to, let's see. Um, in order to utilize it, you're gonna have to parse it. So let's, first off, I think I'm just going to uh, append it to the page so that you can see that it's actually a string. Um, Oh, <laughs> all right, one second, let me break it up. Hmm, maybe I take that back. You, I don't know if you will have to parse it. Um, if you do get any access errors, like you're trying to use a piece of data and it says, um, that it can't find that data, it might be because it needs to be parsed, but let's see, this might actually already be parsed. Is that a typo, Sam? Oh. Parse. Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah, I think that actually this has already been parsed. So this is a raw JavaScript object that it's returning to us. Cool. Um, so you can essentially, let's say that I just wanted to target main, I could say, Data dot main dot dot temperature. Let's get the temperature dot temp. Now I'm just going to log out that one piece of data. Cool. Um. So let's uh, let's jump back to what this asynchronous in Ajax means. When you look at all these, uh, the script on the page, when your page loads, it's gonna run through and execute all of the script. So if I did something outside of my J Ajax call, like let's say that I try to append, um, let's establish a variable called data, weather data, and Inside of here, we will reassign weather data to the data that's returned from the open weather map. If we try to append that down here, it 
it will likely not work because it's going to make this get request and then this success function won't run until we actually have data back. So line 29 is likely going to execute before we've received that data back and executed this reassignment on line 22. Um, in other words, it runs asynchronously. Oh, another typo. Uh, Yeah, see, it's empty right now. Um, so when you're doing stuff with the data, you're going to have to do it inside of your success function in order to account for the, the asynchronous nature of working with APIs. Um, and there are other patterns to, um, to work with asynchronously running code. Uh, but for right now, we'll just be using callback functions like the success function. Um, and then, let's see. One other thing, I do just want to show you what happens when you don't have that API key. Um, we get uh, code 401 uh, message invalid API key. So along with the, the action variables that, that REST has, um, the methods, there are, there's a set of codes that APIs will respond with. Like a, a 404 is not found, a 401 um, is invalid. Let's see, a 401, I wonder exactly what a 401 is. I think it's unauthorized, yeah. Um, and a 403 is forbidden, meaning it's uh, a resource that they don't want you to be able to get to that maybe they use internally. Um, and then when you get a success back, you get things uh, that will be somewhere in a 200 or uh, so like a 200, a 201. And those all stand for, let's see, does they give me a code in here? Yeah, code 200. So all of the 200 codes uh, essentially indicate that, hey, that, uh, you've succeeded, you've done everything right, and here's the data back. Um, all right, so with that, I am going to stop for questions. I can find the chat. Feel free to shout it out or type it into chat. Alrighty. Um, so I guess if, if there aren't any questions, then uh, I will let y'all break off to get into pairs um, and you can start working on the exercises for the day. Awesome. And um, really quick, I think Hacker Actor has an API key on their open weather map in the exercises. Oh, uh, okay. But it's only in that like dark box. If you that Ajax dark box, the stop of Ajax, at the start of Ajax JSON. If you like scroll all the way to the right, you'll see they they tap tagged it onto the end of their query string. But um, actually, I really suggest doing what Zan did and practicing getting an API key because um, a lot of them will ask you to get your own API key that you maybe will using for your um, projects. So uh, follow, go to Open Weather Map and get the API key. It's just as easy as Zan showed, and it'll give you kind of like a little taste of what it's like to go request. Um, your own your own API keys, so j jump into that. Um, as for groups today, uh, let's see. We can do either the breakout group randomizer, or we can let you guys pick your own. We just want you to work in pairs today. Um, type in the chat either like pick or random, and we'll do. We'll just take we'll just summarize. Okay, randomizer. That was my first response. So we're gonna randomize you into pairs. Of course, it's like a split split decision. Next vote's in here. Two. I think pick is winning now. Pick is winning now. Okay. Um, it, we want you to still pick someone that you have not worked with. We'd like you to get a chance to work with everyone in here. So uh, pick is random as a tie. All right, we'll let you we'll let you pair off and pick then. Um, 
reach out to someone on Slack that uh, you have not worked with before. This is going to be your last time um, to, to get this chance. So reach out to somebody that, you're, that you want to pair up with.